Nigel, what I've got in the pan at the moment is a brown, I've actually browned the, the neck of the lamb. Now, scouse traditionally has beef or lamb in it, right? Um, I'm using lamb, which is basically, it's on the bone, I think it's got a little bit more flavour, and it's the cheaper cut of meat, yeah, which definitely. realistically we would have had. Now, all I've done here is brown off the lamb. Now, if I just take this out for now... I've never eaten this, you know, Paul. Have you? I've never had scouse. You've though. never had scouse. scouse? You only live 30 miles off the road, <laughs> mate. I know. And leave that to rest. Now, all the juice is in there. Nigel, if you can chop up that onion, uh, just roughly chop it straight in there. Uh, once that's softened, basically just chop up the potato, the carrot, you're going to have the thyme, the bay leaf, and then the stock back with the meat and then cook that for about an hour and a half to two hours till the meat, check it, the meat will just fall off the bone. It's delicious. For my scouse, I'm using Desiree potatoes, which will break down and thicken the gravy nicely. Now, as a pie, obviously it needs a lid. Now, I'm going to be showing you how to do a rough puff pastry. And to make that, you need flour. And I've got plain flour here. That's well chopped, that chef. Thank you. While Nigel carries on with the pie filling, I'm going to concentrate on the pastry lid. Squeeze the lemon juice in there. Adding lemon juice to the dough helps to break it down, which in turn ensures a lovely flaky pastry. A little bit of salt in there, and then I'm going to add some butter that's just been cubed. It's essential when making rough puff pastry that both your butter and water are really cold. So I'm going to add the water to this mixture and just begin to form this pastry. And just mix it all around with your hands. The butter will break up a little bit, but there will still be chunks in there. I can't believe you've never had scouse. You know scouse, or lob scouse originally it was called, came from sort of the Baltic, Latvia, and it was, it yeah. brought, it was brought in from the sailors. So the sailors brought this dish in with them, and then obviously Liverpool being the port that it was, yeah. they I just grabbed I it. Liverpool is now really buzzing again, isn't it? It was, and it's taken a few years to get there, but now it is, it's one of those lively places that you go to. The and the city centre is fantastic, oh, isn't, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the things, one of the things which I love about going back there is obviously the jibes about Everton and Liverpool. I love all that. Um, Shall I put this in? Yes, please. Uh, yes, that's beautiful. You can put that straight in with the meat. Yeah. Uh, at the time, the bay leaf and the beef stock. Right. And then pop the lid on, and then we can leave that then to uh, cook away. If you have a look at this pastry now, you've got a rough pastry with lumps of butter running all the way through it. And that's perfect, absolutely perfect. So I'm going to make sure I've got all the ingredients from the bottom of the bowl, pop that onto the bench. It's great on the chef working here. Oh, so yeah. Good lad. I'm expensive, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Send me the invoice, mate. Uh, all I'm pop do these is... in, Paul, sorry. <laughs> so, yes, please, yeah. mate. Yeah, thank you. So I'm just going to roll it out again. One more time. So now you flatten out your pastry, and this is another turn. So you fold it over a third. The exposed third goes over the top of that. And because at the moment the butter's beginning to soften, I would put that in the fridge for at least an hour until the butter solidifies again. You need to fold it twice more, and then your puff pastry will be ready. Minimum four. You can do five. So I'm going to pop that in the fridge, bring out one here that I have folded, and there it is. What you're looking for in a good puff pastry or rough puff is marble. Would you agree with that, Nigel? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're looking for a good marble, and that shows you've got a great pastry. Now, with this one, that's going to form the lid, which is going to go on top of the pot. So at the moment, I can park that to one side, bring over this, which is the pot of the scouse. That basically has been cooked for an hour and a half, two hours, the meat is falling off the bone. The potatoes are beginning to break down. The DeZero's potatoes thicken up that sauce. The smell is fantastic. It's a little bit cooler because I've got to put the lid on. If I put it on when it's too hot, the puff pastry will just collapse and fall in. So the idea at this stage is you can taste the liquid and season it to taste. And that's when you put the salt in. So I'll park that down there. I've got my pastry. The next thing I'm going to do is put the lid on the top. When rolling out your rough puff pastry, always start from the middle and work outwards. It's a great pastry, isn't it? It is a great pastry. It's been, I mean, rough puff must have been around for quite some time. In the old, in the old traditional recipes, you still see rough puff just chuck butter in, fold it all in. So you end up with a nice, smooth pastry, and that's going to flake and that's going to grow. So the lid is here. So what I'm going to do is pop that over there, cover as much as you can, 
take it down the sides. I'm going to try and cut it round here using a knife. Take it a little bit further down the side of the pan. Does that that'll allow you to crimp the edge then, Paul? Yeah. I'm just going to basically give a little bit extra around the side and then bond it to the pot itself. <laughs> Obviously, me mum would just save it out the pot yeah. with a big, chunky bread, and that's it, you know. But, I mean, uh, the addition of this sort of buttery pastry, I think, adds something to this, you know. In essence, Paul, it changes it from a stew to a pie, doesn't it? It does, yeah, so exactly. You... Before baking my scouse pie, I brush the top with a beaten egg so it browns up nicely. So it's like a... It's a sort of posh-ish scouse, which is supposed to be a bit like me. So what's happened is I... <laughs> <laughs> I live down in Kent now, you see. Um, so what I've done is decided to put puff pastry on a very traditional bowl of stew. Pop your scouse pie in the oven for half an hour at 200 degrees until the pastry is golden brown. Here's what we did earlier. Oh, yes. Look at that. So you have a beautiful golden pastry all over the top. It's got that flake, it's got that butteriness, and inside is my mum's and mine favourite, scouse pie. Can't wait to try that. <laughs>